We recently shared some ideas on rethinking risk assessment and the internal audit plan and want to use this video to show you more about enabling this process with technology. As we think about layering technology into risk assessment and internal audit planning, there are several key questions that we'll want to consider. What technology is at your disposal? What technologies exist within the organization? And how can they be leveraged by internal audit? Also, what types of technology should you the department leverage? We see options and tools that can be leveraged, whether you have a platform tool or not. The first set of tools is used to aggregate and transform organizational data and develop the risk scoring across comparable attributes or define thresholds and tolerance levels. Next, layering and visualization tools will help us to quickly interpret and analyze the data for risk insights. We recognize organizations may already have a platform tool. This could be a GRC tool or another used by the organization. And this should be explored as a starting point. Let's go ahead and switch over to take a look at an example in Tableau. Thanks for the intro. This sample risk profile view was built to monitor risk across all domains each quarter using a combination of an analytics engine and a visualization tool. Using these types of technologies makes this a sustainable and repeatable process from one quarter to the next. To get to this point, we've gone through a process of collecting, transforming, and scoring organizational KPIs and KRIs for each risk domain and related auditable entities. We also sent out surveys to key stakeholders to apply a qualitative score based on their response. This profile view brings together both qualitative and quantitative risk factors to visualize aggregate risk by domain as well as risk domain details by auditable entity. This is where we'll start to understand what risk domains are of most concern or even what auditable entities are scoring the highest. As we walk through the other components of this dashboard, we will visualize each layer of input into the risk assessment scoring process. Once we've gone through and collected metric data, we want to analyze where potential issues may exist at the lowest level of data obtained. For example, for here we have several people and talent metric indicators by auditable entity. We can quickly identify high-risk auditable entities and understand what drives their risk scoring from a quantitative perspective. Do they have a turnover percentage that is outside of an expected range? Are they having systematic turnover at key management positions? As we review each metric in detail, we can start to see risk themes. These themes may develop into potential audits or at a minimum enhance our discussions with management. Reviewing detailed data also allows us to dive deeper and gain and develop insights and understand if issues are systemic or isolated. After we analyze the quantitative data by risk domain, we want to layer into the process qualitative information. This example outlines scoring based on surveys captured from executive management and risk owners. Surveys could also be used as a mechanism for internal audits to provide their historical knowledge and judgment. By bringing in the ability for internal audit to influence the scoring by risk domain, we develop a formal mechanism that allows for a more proactive approach. Bringing in qualitative information to the process can be accomplished in several different ways. Surveys, interviews, management strategy documents could all influence the final internal audit plan. We combine our historical data with the qualitative inputs and view the entire risk universe with our judgmental lens. This helps us take a unique viewpoint back to our discussions with key stakeholders. Now that we've reviewed quantitative data, layered in qualitative inputs, we set out to draft an audit plan. We want to drive to some level of action by an internal audit or the first or second line of defense for the identified risk. Relying on the quantitative information alone may tell us that we have a potential issue in a certain risk domain. Our qualitative inputs help us define if a risk is significant and how well it's managed. Potential audits fall into three categories of action risks to monitor, audits that provide assurance, and advisory pro projects that collaborate with the other lines of defense. Using a visualization tool, we can dynamically adjust the boundaries of each action zone based on our risk significance and to the degree at which risk is managed. This is great stuff. How about to wrap us up, can you show us how this would translate into a detailed plan which we could manage over the course of the year? Sure. 
Once we've analyzed our qualitative and quantitative inputs and determined our plan of action, we are now ready to finalize the audit plan for the next six months. We can start to assign budget hours for each project against total available resource hours. We can start to schedule when these audits will take place. We can start to think through the questions of, do I have the right resources? Do I need to involve a specialist? The audit plan is developed with the expectation that we will revisit it again in the next quarter once quantitative and qualitative inputs have been refreshed. This helps us to manage the plan in a more dynamic way. To close, this optimized example was built using a combination of an analytics data engine with a visualization tool layer. Innovating your risk assessment process incrementally with your organization's portfolio of existing tools is a great place to start.